The procedure can be done by one procedural clinician. You'll need stock a net, 7.5 cm webral or padding, 10 cm plaster of Paris cold water crepe bandages and tape. The patient is positioned sitting with the elbow supported on a table and the forearm is in supination. The wrist is supported in slight extension with a dorsal gypsoma roll. The wrist is 20 to 30 degrees in extension. The metacarpal phalangeal joints 70 to 90 degrees flexion and the interphalangeal joints full extension. Estimate the plaster length by laying dry splint next to the area to be splinted. 8 to 10 layers. The distal margin is beyond the fingers. The proximal margin, two finger widths below the elbow crease. Cut a semicircle out of the plaster of Paris slab for the thinner eminence. Cut distal corners off the plaster to improve shape and moulding around the fingers. Inspect for wounds and clean and dress as normal. Apply the stocking net to the arm beyond the margins of the plaster, allowing enough to fold back. Cut a small hole in the stocking net for the thumb. Apply two to three layers of the webral or padding beyond the plaster margins, tearing or cutting as it passes through the first web space. Ensure the bony prominences are well padded with the webral and it overlaps 25 to 50% with minimal creasing. Submerge the pre-prepared dry slab in water until bubbling stops and then remove. Squeeze out the water, smooth and apply onto the volar aspect of the forearm, hand and to beyond the fingers. Mould to the contours of the hand. Turn back the padding around the distal and proximal margins of the plaster of Paris. This keeps everything in place and allows for some more moulding. Apply crepe bandages firmly over the slab. You can see here the technique of cutting a hole for the thumb which holds the crepe bandage in place and allows for comfort. Finish applying the crepe bandage for the entirety of the cast and secure firmly with tape. Remember that over a few days these can unravel. Gently mould the plaster of Paris to the patient anatomy maintaining the position of safety of immobilisation until hardened. This is referred to as the posi splint.